about talking about Link Hero. Mm -hmm. All right, kids. Here we go. Let me, uh, yep. Go live. It's probably already live because it says that it's already live, but we don't know for sure. What's up, everybody? Welcome to today's Facebook Live with my very special guest, my homie, what I, who I like to now call Matt Number One, Matthew yeah, Robertson. So, just a quick, quick background on how I know Matt. So, I call them um, Matt Squared. We got Matt Timms and Matt Staten, our partners. They do uh, botpreneurs and botvago and scalepreneur, and they're basically helping people make. A buttload of money or a botload of money with bots, right? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know you love that. I know you love that. So they're making a botload of money with bots and they're teaching people how to do that. Bot, that's going to be on another Facebook Live interview in this group. <laughs> today, mm. today, we're going to talk about how Matt mm. has created, or should I say, <laughs> talking to boot? <laughs> <laughs> Canadian for a minute. Um, uh, I can do it. It's like I know an hour. You can. Oh my god! Afternoon, so afternoon trip to the border. <laughs> <laughs> you are that close to, to, to the Canadian. Some people border, go to right? the mall. I go to Canada. Like you know. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. So anyway, we're here today because Matt's going to talk to us about Link Hero. Link Hero is a software that he put together to basically um, replace <clears throat> Bitly. And uh, even goo.goal, um, it's super, super awesome sauce. Software. That's going away. And so I'm going to shut up and let him talk about it. So tell us about what no, is you talk, you talks. Yeah, what? Yeah, cool. I know you, I can talk. Go. Do you, do you care about me? Do you, do you want me people know who I am? Just I jump into the link. I want to know who you are. I want to know your background. Why do you do this? What? Why did you create software? And what are you do doing? Do you even know my background, Trish? No. Nope. Well, you're a music guy, right? Don't you have a music store? I do. And I should buy my guitar from your music store. <laughs> <laughs> you have a guitar? What the guitar, All right. So for those who don't know me, I'll just keep this super short. Um, I got my start a long time ago. I'm super old. I'm like 50-some. <laughs> <know, so> <laughs> totally messing. A young, I'm a, I'm a young, young pup, young whippersnapper. And... Um, I got started in business. I went to school for music education, so I can conduct your band, I can conduct the church choir, I can conduct the community band and the band show, like whatever you want. I can conduct your high school band, all of it. Um, but a few things I realized I didn't want to be a um, broke musician, I didn't want to be a broke teacher, <laughs> and I just didn't want to be, honestly, I just didn't want to be siloed in, because the reality is uh, when I do something, I'm like all in, top notch. So I was like, you know, if I'm going to do a high school band, if you know anything about high school band, give me like a hashtag marching band, you know, show me that I left. Everybody's seen marching band, drum corps, or whatever. So in my head. <laughs> Did you just ask people to give you a hashtag marching band? Yes. <laughs> Heck yes, I did. <laughs> You're jealous because my hashtag is better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Keep it real. Oh real, all right. And watch, I bet, I, bet, I bet everybody comments because everybody knows marching band. So, irregardless, uh, <laughs> what happened is I was like, if I'm going to be a band director, I'm going to go all in. But what happens is if you're a high school band director, you're there at 6.45 in the morning for morning practice. You're there all day. Your class size, your average class size is 120. Every other teacher would go insane with that class size. But band, you know, average class size is 120. So, Whatever, and then you're there after school sectionals, and then you're there in the evening for more rehearsals and jazz band and competitions and football games and pep band, and then you're gone all weekend, every weekend. So it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm doing that. I that's all literally all I'm gonna do. And uh, frankly, I just didn't, didn't want to only do that. So I opened a music store because why not? And uh, taught private lessons, grew it that way. Super fun. This was 2011, 2012. Honestly, I just kind of grew up in the age where the internet was coming into existence and being integrated into lives. This was early cell phone when I was growing up. You know, I got a Nokia brick probably, middle school-ish, something like that. So it was like one of those things where internet and junk came into the world 
while I was growing up. So 2011, uh, 2012, I was like, I got to get students. I got to get people to show up a music store. So I just, whatever. I, I think I started on podcasts is probably where I, but I remember the first thing I listened to was um, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire. Listened to him for a while. Um, I still love his stuff. I just, for me, I was like, it's really granular. I want to go deeper. So I started hearing the names that would come up over and over and over. Um, Pat Flynn, I'd hear Neil Patel, I'd hear other people. So um, I went crazy deep on Pat Flynn, did all my own local website, local SEO, um, social media, just kind of did everything. In 2011, Facebook was still trying to get people onto Facebook, uh, businesses specifically. So it was like, I get 70% reach, which is awesome. And Instagram, this is pre-Facebook Instagram. So for me, it was um, I just took the same approach. I only know music and artsy junk and I know teaching and education and educational psychology. So that's all I knew how to do. And now we have a term like educational marketing and information marketing and engagement. And I'm like, those are the only things I know how to do because I'm a teacher. So, so that's what I did on, on the internet and it just, it crushed, it grew. Eventually I got married and moved two years ago or something like that. And, uh, and so at the time, a few years before that, I was just, it's one of those things, whenever you do something good, everybody wants a piece of you, right? Trish, this happens to you, right? You do something oh, really everybody good. Everybody wants everyone, a piece of me. Are you kidding me? Everyone wants, piece, <laughs> everyone wants a piece of Trish. So what happens, everybody calls you all the time. So people are like, how did you go to your music store? You're really great on social media. People actually care about what you post. I'm like, I know. Like, here, let me help you. So I had a few clients on the side. And I knew I was getting married, so I kind of started to transition, pick up more clients. I was like, let me see if I can do this. I'm helping other people. Let me just do this kind of agency thing and see how it goes. And it was super awesome, super fun. Uh, obviously, for me, my wife, I moved because my wife is going through pharmacy school. And so I was like, I don't want to, like, re open another business, whatever, up where I live now in Duluth, Minnesota. And then have to reroute again if she has residency or whatever. And then reroute again when she gets a real job. I'm like, this is a mess. I'm just going to do my best to keep it completely online. And uh, that's what I did. So I kept online, did the agency thing. Um, when was it? So it was June when I was kind of all in on the agency thing. And it took me, oh boy, I don't remember what year I got married. That's terrible. So 2016, I got married. Uh, the following year, early 2017, there was just, wait, early 2017, that's when there was this huge push of people like teaching, hey, you can get rich with a, by running Facebook ads. <laughs> you can get rich. You can make a bazillion dollars every month by running Facebook ads. And here's the catch. You don't even have to know how to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever. Like, if you're doing that, I'm not hating on anybody or any course or anybody that teaches that, but... The reality is, is I started seeing that and I saw a bazillion and a half gurus that say, all you have to do is know one ad. You don't know how to set, you don't know how to have to, uh, you don't have to know how to set things up. You don't have to know what marketing is. You just need to know that you just give people a big discount, give that person's contact information to the business and then charge them a lot of money and you can get rich and live on a beach. And I got frustrated with that, not because it doesn't work, like, not because it doesn't work. I got frustrated because um, there's a whole bunch of people that had no idea how to fit into the business. So they only did marketing because it helped themselves like get out of their nine to five or whatever. And it really had nothing to do with helping a business grow or actually marketing the business. It was just how do I get out? So that's kind of when I started building YouTube and building resources and doing my teachery thing 2017 because I was like, this is stupid. There's so much junk out there and so many businesses that are hiring people that run ads and they don't even care about their business. You know, one thing goes wrong and it flops or they're just getting ripped off because frankly, they just don't know what they're doing. Right. And so I started, I started, that's when I was like, become an influencer or whatever. For me, it was just, I'm just going to put out some resources and actually be a level-headed marketer who's run businesses, who's grown businesses, who actually knows the full picture of how ads and social media and all that junk actually fits into your business. And so that was summer, probably whatever, January through middle of the year, 2017, year ago. And then around that time, I got really burned out from doing agency stuff because for me, I was like, I want to run a business. <laughs> and not that running agency isn't running a business, but um, 
you know, it's like, I was like, I'm tied to the success of everybody else's business for my business to be successful. I was like, I kind of want to do my own thing. So I was doing a number of different things, whatever. So that's exactly what happened to me, by the way. That's why I'm just like, yes, 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 and yes. I, like, I'm like checking I mean, off as we're going along. I'm like, yep, same thing happened to me. I was like, some I can't. Of it was my, way some of it was fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. Some of it was the clients. And it was fun. I had big clients. Like, like, it was super fun. The marketing side, you know, clients that were like, you're in every Cabela store in the nation, like that type of clients. Like, it was super fun. But it's just frustrating because I'm like, you guys suck at everything else. So many politics and so I was just like, I got to do some of my own junk. And that's what I did. And somewhere in that mix, uh, I started consulting for a development company in another country. And one thing led to the next. And I was like, well, I hate all of my link tools because I have to have four of them to <laughs> do whatever I want for any scenario. I was like, you know, Bitly kind of shortens junk, but it's disorganized. I can't find anything can't change anything it's just kind of the annoying um and then there was like snipply where i was like oh i can pixel or add, add call to action buttons like that's that's great and all um but man the dashboard is terrible like it's, it's just completely disorganized I, it's not a link management it's not a link shortener the only good thing is literally that you can like add a call to action pop-up that's the only good thing about it and it's just so confusing. Um, and then for me, on top of that, doing some affiliate stuff, I was like, I have so many links going on and all of these tools suck. And if I want to do certain things, I have to like, like who actually stacks links? Like that's just stupid um, and ineffective. So at the end of the day, you know, you really can only have one link tool going on at a time. Otherwise, for one, why would you want to manage like, <laughs> It's a pain enough to manage like these ads to this funnel, to this email list, to this tag and this automation, let alone every time they click this link, I need to make sure it goes through four different link shorteners. So that way this one's the short and this one's the pixel and this one's the track and this one's the whatever. I'm just like, that's stupid. I'm going to work to make one link tool that is wicked powerful, um, you know, rich, rich, rich data potential. It shortens, it makes it clean and easy. It has some of the cool marketing things like pixels and the pop-ups and all those things. And it's also simple and organized and intuitive and just easy to use. Because so I'm like, I love the power of stuff and I love simple and easy to use. And at the end of the day, I don't want to have to manage all of my links in multiple places. Let me just do it in one spot and call it good. So that was, that was really the birth. The, and I will yeah, tell you... I will tell you, I want to say this real quick because what I was, I was literally like this close before you introduced me to Link Hero because I was using Bitly and I was like, this is annoying the crap out of me. I was this close to creating a Google spreadsheet with all of my affiliate links to keep them all organized and not like not even kidding you. Then I started using Link Hero. I'm like, oh my God. And I didn't even realize the other tool that you just showed me right before we went live, <laughs> you can organize it all. So please show us because this is for me, I'm like, this is it. Like, this is all I need. This is my one stop shop for all my affiliate stuff. That's, this is all I need. hundred percent. And so, so that's, yeah, that's really what it was. I was like, I have a million and a half links. I have some sexy marketing things I want to do with my links. And, um, so I was like, you know what, <clears throat> for all of all the bitly people out there, I'm like, how about we make it organized? You can tag, tag, filter, search, sort your links. Um, you can add as many tags as you want, you know, so you can actually categorize stuff, um, you know, so you can tag, filter, search, sort all of your links to keep them super organized where you can always actually find them again and so you don't have to recreate links. Um, okay. You can customize the link. You can change your destination URL. Bitly users love that. Say you put a, so you put a master link for a certain offer of yours for a main course and then you start to build up that link and it's on 70% of your YouTube channels and Facebook groups and blog posts just scattered everywhere and it's going to this one lead magnet, your core lead magnet, right? Um, then all of a sudden you change your core lead magnet. A lot of people would traditionally use Bitly everywhere and they go, oh crap, I have, <laughs> I have to go find every link everywhere and change it for my new lead magnet. Or instead, 
you can just go in here and change the destination URL. So it's like Bitly users love that. So it's the same link that you keep sharing everywhere, but it just changes where it, changes where it points. Or you're using a ClickFunnels funnel, and they're, they do weird junk with the caching, so the URL gets screwed up. They have to change the URL and create a different funnel and whatever, and then you have to go create a new Bitly, and you're like, okay, how many posts did I share that on? How many, how many comment threads did I put that in? Now, instead of like going create a new short link for your funnel, that the link just changed, you just go into Link Hero and figure out where it is and swap out the link it's pointing to. That's awesome. <clears throat> it's so cool. So all you Bitly people change the destination URL, customize your links. Um, it's organized, filter, search, sort, all that sort of stuff. Um, for anybody that's done like Snipply or anything like that, you can call the action links, you know, so you can cloak your links. Um, I personally, I like, I like that idea about the whole redirecting thing because <clears throat> so for some of us, we might do affiliate marketing through having like a lead magnet out there being like a free PDF download or a cheat sheet or, you know, a, you know, three video, three free video sequence, right? And then say, hey, you know what? Because um, you've tested it and you find out, and eh, the cheat sheet's not working so well, or the three video, the free video thing's not working so well. More people would actually like to come on to a Facebook Live that I'm doing on my business page. So they want to have that instead. Like is, I'm still talking about the same thing. So you're saying that I could redirect that link and say, hey, come to this live or come to this other thing, or here's an auto webinar instead, mm -hmm. instead of having yeah. to recreate a whole new link. Totally. Or your short link is something like. Like Trish's free training, like that's what your your um, short link is is slash Trish or Trish free training. Okay. Then it's like for ten years down the road, you can have links from interviews and guest blogs and guest podcasts, whatever pod podcasts, podcasts, whatever. You're just featured everywhere, and you drop this Trish's free training link everywhere, and then whatever your current free training is, you just point that link to it. Ooh. <gasps> Oh my God, I love that. So, I, so have, all you I people, have a thing on yeah. my website that talks about free training. So every time I do something new and different, I can refresh it, redirect it to something else. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. So I like that's, that. that's really wonderful. Snipply people, you can add your call to action pop up. The hey, click here. You know, you, you feature somebody's viral content. Like, um, you want to share. Let's see, who else, who else talks about video or whatever? For me, Facebook, you want to share one of John Loomer's posts or show, social media examiner, or you're trying to promote ClickFunnels. And so you share a ClickFunnels blog post that you don't actually own. So what you can do is you can cloak the link. So then when they click your link here, a link, they go to that site, they go to that blog post or whatever. And two things happen. It covers up the URL. So it just has whatever your link here, a link is there. So it looks like it's yours. And there's also a little pop up on the bottom where you can link to your affiliate link. Just. Wow. Okay. Super cool. Show us Super some cool shiz. Stuff. Show well, us what you're talking about. Because <laughs> I'm confusing myself, Trish. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at this. Because I'm putting, um, I'm gonna put this video, I'm going to repurpose this. You know this is going to go on the YouTube too. So let's drop it like a tot, show people the link hero. Yeah, dog. Put it on the YouTube's interwebs. Absolutely. So here you go. This is the dashboard. You log in here, and um, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing fancy, nothing, whatever. It's straightforward. You got all your links. And then, so to create a link, this is what we do. What's your website, Trish? It's trishlito.com. Oh, my God. It's okay. I, I, I almost Not finished it. Cool. That's oh what she God. said. Um, okay. Let's see how this looks. Like Trish Lito's website. Yes, we know it's not secure. I'm working yeah, on that. that. Look at that. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh, I need to get my Corvago on here, too. That's another That's another live. Yeah, we don't, we don't say that on this show. We wait until a different show. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it. I'll cut that out. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. So, so here we go. Let's say, me, let's say that I'm trying to promote ClickFunnels. And Trish has a really great interview on her site that would work really well as part of my promotion. I want to say, hey, go check out 
Trisha's website for this information and then come back to me for whatever. This is what I would do. Um, so she's got that there. So I'm going to post the destination there and I'm going to say um, whatever, Trish Lito's website, you know, Trish Lito's web and then click the link. This is going to make it so it doesn't actually say Trish Lito at the top. Pretty sneaky. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. So I put the destination URL, put what I want um, this to be, and I go to the next. Then here's where all the fun stuff happens. I can categorize this. So the tags, um, I think of the tags really as categories. All of my affiliate links or all the things pointing to my website. Or maybe it's all things in a certain macro funnel of yours. You have a certain amount of blog posts and funnels and trainings that all kind of eventually point toward one specific course that you're selling. Um, so I'm going to say funnel. I'm going to say Trish Lido in case I have a whole bunch of different links that are promoting Trish's stuff. I'm going to say affiliate because it's going to be an affiliate link. We're just going to say. Um, let's see. And for the notes, this is literally just an open notes, like a description. Describe it so you actually know what it is. Um, link pointing at Trish's home page with a CTA back to my affiliate link and the MRT uh, Facebook pixel. And all of those things, every word in here is searchable. So if you go in to search for a link, it'll look through these as well. Okay, hold and on. Then, hold on, hold on. We gotta make sure that we're breaking this down in Lehman's terms real quick. CTA is call to action for those of you who don't know. What is, what did you, what is the MRT? That's my name. <laughs> oh, okay, Matthew sure Robertson. Link posting at Trisha's homepage with a CTA back to affiliate link and the. And my Facebook pixel. So I would put, so then the Facebook ID or the pixel ID, I'll show you where to find that too. It is you go to your business manager mm -hmm. or your ads manager or whatever. Um, and so you go to your ad account. Grab this one. Well, this is a big fat lesson in here for everybody who doesn't know how to do this. This is going to be fun. I mean, it I know how to do cool. it, but this is, I'm very grateful that you're doing this. Uh -huh. I've used that cover up too, Trish. I know how to do it. <laughs> Whatever. I literally did a live event teaching people yeah. about the Facebook pixel and they're like, oh my God, that's a thing. <laughs> I'm, just, like, I'm just messing yes. with you, Trish. Trish it Lisa. literally runs your life on Facebook. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And so I go in here and I go to the pixels. So all of you in Trish, Team Trish already know what's going on here. Um, but so what I do is I grab the pixel and it's slow because of Zoom. Correct. My bad. All right. So you, yeah, come on, Trish. So we're in Ads Manager and we're grabbing the pixel. It's really nice that all we have to do is grab the pixel ID. You're not grabbing. Um, the big slab of code or extra events or any of that stuff. You're not finding the header tag and you're not talking to developers. All you do is go here and it's really straightforward because once you click into the pixel, uh, you I just know, come up I here Zoom's and fault. you literally click, click this little string of numbers and it copies it for you. Yeah. And then you come back to your link hero and click put those numbers right in there. And it will install your Facebook Pixel for you. So, and then we're gonna go finish, and you don't have to, you can pick, mix and match whatever features you want. Like, you don't have to do all of these. So that I'm gonna do is um, get Trisha's junk here, and I am going to point it back to my website. So then I'm gonna create this link. So many things going on here. And so, uh, so let's hold on a second. So right here in the dashboard, you can see, I can just click here and it'll get my short link. Um, this is where it's pointing to. This is the description that I can search for up here. If I ever want to find it, I just type by description. You see the master number of clicks, all the tags that you can, whatever, all, all that fun stuff. And then what's, what I'm going to do is, here's the extra trick, is I'm going to come and grab this link, the one with the extra CTA junk in there. And I'm going to grab that, and a few things happen. 
assuming everything goes right. So, so a few things are going on here. It's um, it's Trisha's website. It's still my link, so it can be branded with my stuff. I have this extra pop up here that says "Get Trisha's Junk," and then if I click here, you can see in the bottom left, it's my website. So I can promote my offer by using other people's viral or authority content. Oh my god! I did not cool, even know right? that you could do this. My mind is blown so then, right now. And then hold on, hold on. And on top of that, <laughs> oh what's happening? God. It's so cool. You um, guys, there is absolutely no excuse to not make money this week. None. No excuse. Zero excuse. So then, check this out. Pixel ID <laughs> last four digits three six three four. Do you have a Facebook pixel on your website, Trish? Of course I do. Do you really? On my website, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well. Oh no, on my website. Wait, on my website. I don't think you do. Oh no, no, I might not on this one. I, I don't. No, I think I do. So, regardless, check this out. My pixel is here, so I'm pixeling people. So I get to say, hey, look at this amazing content about doing live videos, um, and then I have an extra call to action that says, get my get my lead magnet. I'm pixeling everybody, and so I can retarget them and build custom audiences, and I don't even have to write the blog post. Like, so you are now it's a, earning you 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 are you are you are pixeling them, and you are earning money by basically being the curator here. You're saying, hey, here's something you should probably check out. I read it. I think it's awesome. This chick rocks. Yep, and then. And then also you can check this out. Okay, hold on. I have to. I have to fully. I have to fully understand this. So let me. Let me. Do you have any any people that are doing like agency work or Facebook ads at all? Maybe it, there's going to be all kinds of. This so, is brand new. So this is brand new I'm group. Gonna, I'm gonna so pretend, yeah. I'm going to pretend. I'm going to pretend that you're doing a client work, and let's say I'm working with a dentist or something, and what I really want to do is pre-qualify his audience. By promoting a blog post that's um, seven tips to get your kids to brush their teeth at night. Okay. Um, for the life of me, I can't get my client to write anything or do a video. Like, he just won't do anything for me. Okay. So what I do is I go out um, to a uh, authority site. Maybe it's a parenting blog. Maybe it's a dental organization in, or, um, you know, whatever, association, whatever it is, and just find a different – authority site that says seven tips to get your kids to brush your teeth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run traffic to that blog post from his page. Okay. So then he didn't have to write anything, but I'm using this other blog post and it's a good blog post. So then he goes here and it says seven tips to brush your teeth. All of his potential customers go there. Seven tips to brush your teeth or get your kids to brush your teeth at night. Down here it says, um, you know, get, you know, uh, one free kid teeth cleaning or one free checkup or one free whatever it is, free candy at your next dentist appointment, whatever you want. And, um, and then this link is going back to my landing page with the offer or the voucher or whatever. And then on top of that, I'm pixeling, um, I'm pixeling everybody that's going here so I can retarget them back to that schedule your first appointment as well. That is that is fantastic. My my wheels are so, spinning out of control right now. So many things, and then if you're just a curator, hey, look, there's us. That's so cool. Um, so check this out. Assuming this is going right as well. Um, you see that, Matt? Pull in. <laughs> I know we're like top top right there. So it's gonna pull in your site and everything. It's just it's just so cool. We're right there. What a thug on the right. Get that guy out of here. So all that to say, you can use people's content to pixel your audience, to promote your offers to your audience, um, or even if you're just curating organic content, whatever, you can pixel and retarget. So, so that's some of the advanced-ish advanced, advanced -ish things. And then coming back here, and please stop me if you have any other thoughts or whatever. I, I'm going to. I'm actually pulling up my notepad real quick because I want to kind of put together like AKA short notes. Uh, or mm -hmm. show so, notes. So, um, yeah, let me let me finish this walkthrough. Yeah, do it, do it. Then, I just, 
Yeah. And we'll, we'll hack away. So what happens is clicks are starting to build up here. I can click in here and see all this junk, um, see where the clicks are on the map. See, that's me. This is probably just a Facebook test or whatever. Um, whatever, that's me up in Duluth, Minnesota on the shores of Lake Superior. Link statistics, I come here. It was direct traffic, because obviously I posted it right into the browser. Um, link type, it's a call to action link because it had that extra thing on there. And then if I click here, I can go in and see that, yeah, see this was just a Facebook, a Facebook ping to make sure it's the real deal. Uh, so in there, there's my IP address, there's my location, um, there's my browser, Google Chrome, I'm on a Mac OS X, exactly right, doing all that stuff, and um, it's all there. We could actually pull your, like, <laughs> behind the scenes, we have your zip code and your geolocation and all that junk too, we just don't give people that, but it's all there. So it's like, it's crazy, crazy rich data about your audience. And you don't have to look through, like, set up your Google, an uh, Google Analytics and junk. You just come here and say, oh my goodness, my entire audience is using Chrome. Maybe I should build a Chrome browser or promote a Chrome. Holy extension. crap, this is awesome. I can't even. All of, all of my audience, everybody that's clicking my links is coming from Mac or maybe this is a link that you have on your YouTube channel. For one, you can pick, like, here's, here's my favorite spot. I use this on my YouTube channel. Because what happens is a lot of people do this, and I think it's a little premature. A lot of people, when they're affiliate marketing, and I'm going to start going to close this for a second and rant. Bear with me. No, go ahead. My so, brain is, like, going a million miles a minute. I'm just, you're, you're like. A, a lot, this is what a lot of people teach in affiliate marketing. And just to be clear, I do not disagree with this. I am not saying this is a bad strategy, but what I am saying is it's bad if it's the only strategy that you ever used. So what people, a lot of people teach is get them to do a squeeze page, get them to do a bridge page, get their email, and then send them to your affiliate link. Every, I, you've heard that, right, Trish? I have, and I have to tell you, I don't agree with it either. I like, I don't know, I'm, you know me, I'm a little so, bit more organic when, I come, when it comes to, like, I want, anyway, go ahead. So this is why it's super awesome, and this is why this tends to be my approach. I tend to use retargeting funnels. So somebody is engaged with my content, I'm going to show them more content with my ads and show them more content with my ads to get them to purchase. So what I'll do is somebody's on my YouTube channel, and I want to send them to my, let's say, ClickFunnels affiliate offer. So I'm going to use a link hero, uh, just a short redirect link to send them to ClickFunnels with my affiliate link from YouTube. Really cool, right? Um, I could send them to a squeeze page first, but I'm going to, whatever. You could try that. I don't really care what you do. But what I do is I send them there, and then I start retargeting them. So if they just bought, um, if they just bought, great, I get a commission. If they didn't, that's okay. I just pixeled them. So now I'm going to start showing them ads on Facebook and audience network, and I'm, they're going to see my face everywhere. And they're also going to see all their really helpful tutorials on how to set up your ClickFunnels account, how to set up your first funnel, how to attach MailChimp, or how to attach whatever mail you promote as well, how to attach MailChimp to your first uh, ClickFunnels funnel. And they're going to start seeing that video. Either, here's what happens, either they purchase through your link, and then they start seeing your content and love you even more, um, or they clicked your link, didn't buy, or cookied by your affiliate link, and start seeing your ads, and then go back there and box, they realize how easy it is, or they watch the whole video, are still in consideration, and then you just keep retargeting them with the next video, that's um, how to make your first sale with ClickFunnels. Like, you just keep showing them your content, and and I'm, uh, obviously I said this before, but I'm huge, I love, I love Pat Finn, Plin Pat Flynn's approach to everything oh my God. Provides, provides so much value where people feel indebted to you to actually buy through your link. And so that's literally what happens to me is people see my content and they go start looking at the tools I'm using. And then they strategically, because I'm controlling it, start seeing more content of mine and more content of mine and more content of mine until they actually go buy. And sometimes people are going to message me. I, I, I've never once promoted funnel scripts I've probably had 10 or 15 people message me and say, what's your funnel scripts affiliate link? 
because your YouTube videos are so helpful. I really just, I'm going to use your, I want to use your affiliate link. And because it's that, or they start seeing my junk on Facebook after they watch, found me on YouTube, SEO, click my link here, link, I retarget them. They keep seeing me everywhere. My helpful content There's brand equity. And then A, they're already pixeled by my affiliate link. And B, they keep seeing my stuff to convince them. Either they bought and they're going to keep seeing helpful content to make them stick, or they're going to get sold after seeing more of my content. And it's very organic. Training time out real quick. This is training time out. I want to speak to this for just a second. So Matt's got a bunch of videos on YouTube, right? Now, do you make, I'm just asking the question, yes or no. I, I just want to know like how you've done this. Are your YouTube videos, are they, are, is it a mix and match that it's, you just recorded a video and uploaded it to YouTube or was it maybe a Facebook live that you did in a group or on your business page and you uploaded it to YouTube? Like what is your YouTube channel consist of? Um, my YouTube videos are pretty much, I think they're a hundred percent made specifically for YouTube. Okay. Because when I do Facebook lives, they tend to be more engaging and ranting and whatever, just dumb stuff because okay. <laughs> it's okay. Facebook. And, so then no, my YouTube, no. from, yeah, from the beginning, my YouTube strategy has been 100% SEO. I have absolutely sucked on the growing a community side of YouTube. And so every single video is how-to. Like, yeah, I, think my you YouTube, look, I feel like my YouTube channel sure. is 100% like my low-hanging fruit funnel to getting people into my Facebook world, which is fine, or my website, mm -hmm. right? So, but what you said was you're providing so much value – your stuff is like you're teaching and I get the same thing like people even just interviewing somebody and asking a question like you know some of the interviews I've done you've seen the interviews that I've done with like some very high level influencers right yeah. including yourself but like Jose Pena and Josh Forty and Arnie I mean these people are just they're crushing it they're crushing their business right and I just interviewed Rachel S. Lee the other day who she's two comma club winner just won the freaking click funnels dream card this girl's She's crushing it, absolutely crushing it. But my point is this, for those of you who are in this group and you're just learning the whole affiliate marketing thing, that alone is extremely valuable. If you interview somebody who's doing something awesome, right, and you're asking all the right questions and they're dropping so much gold, people are going to be like, oh my God, I want to I wanna watch more of her videos or his videos because this is awesome. Like I'm learning from the best of the best in the industry. And they'll reach out to you and be like, I just saw your interview with Rachel S. Lee or Jeff Bannock, right? I want to learn more about what you do. I either want you to interview me or I want your affiliate link for whatever you have, right? So that's value in and of itself. But then if you record a video or you do a Facebook Live, or whatever, and you're walking people through the process of how to use something, that's value. That's it, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, and it doesn't have to be software. It doesn't have to be click funnels. It could be, you know, why my kids, why my kids counting to 30. My kid's four years old. She counted to 30 by herself yesterday because we have leapfrog videos in our car. You got the little, the little TVs that go drop down. We don't put Disney movies in there. It's leapfrog. They're either counting. They are, they're learning how to form words and letters or they're saying their alphabet, but there's little songs, right? I could do a Facebook live and just be like, you guys, these, these DVDs are, are helping my kids learn while I'm in the car and they love it. Right. Here's my link. It doesn't matter. It doesn't freaking totally. matter. It can be well, anything. That's thing. Yeah, I kind of just interject on that. I know we're talking about Link Hero, but let me throw this in here. Like, um, it always has to start. Don't start at what you have to promote. Start at who your audience is and who you're trying to help. So I've gotten a lot of – I know I've gotten a lot of affiliate sales because people tell me after they buy something. Um, is – I'd say half of my YouTube channel is it's like stuff like mini chat or setting up an auto responder or um, right. Setting up your business manager in Facebook. I get an insane number of like social media managers that reach out to me for a number of things because I have one of the top ranked videos on like how to add a, somebody's Facebook page to your business manager. And so it's like, you don't really realize what's going on and how many people are going to find your affiliate links just figure out how you can provide value to your audience. They're going to love you more. And yeah, I think that one of the biggest things that's missing in the internet marketing world in general is that 
we forget that we're still talking to humans on the other side and we're building relationships. So what happens is we go, and, and rightfully so, I get why, but mentality is, is we have to control the conversation. So we say, get their email as soon as possible so that way you can keep in touch and can control the conversation with them. And we forget that if you provide value enough, people are gonna keep going back on their own. And that's, that's the way you grow a sustainable business is that mentality. I'm not saying do or don't get their email right away, but I'm saying the mentality shouldn't be how can I get their email, it should be how can I provide so much value that they're gonna keep coming back. Well, and what's going to happen is people are going to like, I did a live video the other day and I gave a call. I give a very strong call to action on every single one of my lives that I do. I either say, Hey, come check out my website, Trisha, Trishlito or Trishlito.com or email me with questions, Trisha, Trishlito.com. I don't say click this. I don't say click that. Sometimes I do, but typically I give a very verbal call to action and I get people, there's somebody in this group right now because they emailed me and I gave her, I gave them an answer. They asked me a question about affiliate marketing. I gave her a very honest answer. And then I put the opportunity to join this free group and she jumped on it. Right? Mm -hmm. So people will don't be like, here is my email address. Please give me more of that thing that you do. <laughs> totally. And yeah. the core, so, like, here's the deal. The core, the core has to be providing value. I've got a friend who does a lot of YouTube stuff. Maybe. Have you ever met Gwendolyn Gay? No. No, she got a Facebook group, does a lot of YouTube stuff, and she she goes, your value, I don't know, I have like 500 some subscribers, just, but but she goes, you have such a great YouTube channel, and everything you do besides the videos sucks. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have a cover video, I don't have the junk on the homepage, like, it, it's all value, it's the only way I've grown is... Um, I watch, That's why I tell I so many people, like they get so worried about, oh, I don't have the fancy cameras, the lighting. I don't, I don't do all the, I don't know how to do the technology. I'm like, do you know how to use your cell phone? I've never you know edited how to a use video. Your cell phone or share your screen. That's all you need to worry about. I'm like, just do a freaking Facebook Live, engage with your audience. Don't engage with who cares? Like for me, I don't even care. If, I, if I'm engaging with my audience, then that shows people that I do good Facebook Lives when I when they watch my shit on YouTube, right? So. Oh. I upload all my crap onto, onto YouTube. I don't care. As long as I know okay. it's got a good title, I've tagged it well, and I'm giving a strong call to action in my description, and I value, value, value up front. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what people want. They, how to, how to fill in the freaking blank, right? <laughs> Everybody's looking yeah, up how to. <laughs> and for me, that's like, that's what, that's what I admire so much about, about people like Pat Flynn, where, he doesn't really do much with bonuses. Like I've never, I mean, he does some mostly like around launches. Um, but this whole ClickFunnels world of like having all these bonuses on top of your affiliate offer. I don't, I don't disagree. I have bonuses. So right, 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 right. But, but the, the value years, is, yeah. Five years of my understanding of affiliate marketing was I'm going to create enough awesome content where people want to buy through my affiliate link. And that was my only perspective on affiliate marketing was how Pat Flynn does it was, I'm just going to give you so much free junk that you want to buy through my link Dude, and it works. His free webinars are unfreaking believable. In fact, I created this group because he lit such a fire under me for affiliate marketing. I literally watch his affiliate. Market. Look at this. I'm not even kidding you. I have to show you guys. This is what I do. Where the hell did I put it? It's underneath here. This is what I do. I get into webinars and I make sure that I am laser focused. If I can't watch it live, I'm going to catch the replay. I'm going to do it when nobody's interrupting me, right? Like I have to be focused. Yeah. And this is what I do. I sit down and I write two full, two freaking pages worth of notes, right? I picked up so many nuggets from this, from that guy's free webinar. And he, and he was funny because he does the same thing that I do. He was going on and on on one thing. And he's like, okay, okay, I got it. He's like, focus, Pat, focus. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I feel like I'm watching the male version of me conducting a webinar. <laughs> but because he just, that's how we are. You know, we're on the, we're similar people that way. We just, it's just, I just want to give as much information as I can so that people are like, holy crap, I got to buy that thing from her. Like she knows what she's talking about. She's, she's skilled at this, right? Mm -hmm. So this went on. We, we're dropping a ton of gold right now. That's all I got to say. So 
Uh, this so has been a lot of fun. I do have to. I have to get going. So I just clocked back into work. I have to finish my work day. Okay. But um, I can. I can take a hint. Domo arigato, Mister. <laughs> Bot so all of you people, if you have any questions about Link Hero, let me, I'll give the pitch. If you have any questions about Link Hero, if you're using Bitly, um, get over here. If you're using Sniffly, get over here. If you're using something crazy, confusing, and complex like, like Click Magic or these crazy things because somebody, somebody else had told you to because it's the right thing, I would say do you actually understand what you're doing in there? If not, get over to Link Hero. Trish is going to drop her affiliate link below. Um, get on it. User affiliate link, get it. There's still currently a lifetime deal on the website. I'd highly recommend that. We're like within two weeks or so, I've been told, of our Chrome extension coming out. Um, custom domains will be the next feature after that. So, and get the lifetime. For those of you, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, get the lifetime because as soon as a couple more of the, those features roll out, uh, lifetime's going to go away. A few more planned tiers will come up, prices will slowly. Slowly pull up a little bit. It's already more affordable than. And here's another thought: Sniffly to add your pixel. It's like the seventy dollar plan for us, like five bucks. So, or just get the lifetime. Just do it. Just do it. And I'm not gonna make the reference to that. Yeah, that brand. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm not opening up that can of worms today. No, uh -huh. but. <laughs> But what I do want to say is um, for those of you who are in this group and you're brand spanking new to me and what I do, um, this interview with Matt Timms is literally just like the very, very basic tip of the iceberg of the types of people that I'm going to be interviewing in this group and the amount of knowledge and gold that you're going to hear drop because these, these are the people that I, I am, are, these are my homies, these are my connections, this is my circle of peeps, so the best of the best in the industry. They are absolute nerds. Um, and I love nerds. Nerds make the world go round and make people a lot of money. <laughs> so, That's all right, buddy, cool. I appreciate you. I will see you very, very soon. Um, and yeah, if you want, I will, I'll download this and I'll shoot you over the video if you want it, if you want to upload it to YouTube, whatever you want to do. Please Put it on it. your stuff. I'll share it out, whatever. So word. All right. Peace out. Later. See you.